Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Before we go any further, please subscribe to my channel. It makes a big difference and I promise to love you forever if you do. Celia would like to introduce you to Kabir Umar, who prefers to be known as Michael Vereen, a much decorated, well respected and highly articulate member of the US Army. Oh, wait. Hello dear, he said. How are you doing? Thanks for accepting my friend request. Nice to meet you. Which country are you from? And which country are you at the moment? Hi, said Celia. I live in Durham in the north of England. Why do you think I'm from somewhere else? Are you looking for someone? No, he said. I just want us to be friends. I want us to know more about each other. And then, to make sure that he wasn't talking to a fellow scammer, added, L.I.E. OK, said Celia. Where do you live? As in, live. Not a rambling diatribe about where you were born, lived, moved to, etc. Celia was feeling a bit ratty. She'd had a flood of requests, all from people who listed where they were born, where they'd moved to, where they were living now and where they were working. Now what are you talking about, she said, in reply to him saying L.I.E. I was born and raised in San Francisco, California, he said, but currently working here in Syria for peacekeeping mission. I'm working under the United Nation. I was deployed here for special assignment. That sounds exciting, said Celia. What kind of special assignment? I'm in a peacekeeping mission here, he said. I've often wondered what peacekeepers actually do, said Celia. Well, I want us to be good friends in sincerity, honesty and trust. Although we just knew each other, we can share ideas and discuss about more issues as we talk more about ourselves. And as time goes on, there may be something great for us in the future. What do you say? I say what I just said, replied Celia. I've often wondered what peacekeepers actually do. We protect life and property, he said. Ah, oh, OK, said Celia. So, how old are you and what's your job, he asked. I'm 55, she said. I'm an administrator in the admissions department of the university in Durham. How long have you been in Syria? I've been here for one year and some months now, he said. I'm 58 years old. Are you on Hangouts? And so, as ever, they moved to Hangouts. Hello, my dear friend, he said over on Hangouts. Is me, your friend on Facebook? And he sent her a photo. And then he thought he'd call Celia. I'm going to play you that call. And then afterwards, I'm going to play you a very short extract from a video that I found on YouTube of an interview with the genuine person in that photograph. I don't think it would be very hard for you to tell the difference between the genuine American accent that the person in that photograph has and the not quite so genuine American accent that the person who called Celia has. Hi there. Hello. I can't hear you. Hello. Oh, now I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello. Can Hi. You hear, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, yes. Yeah, so how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you very much. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. So are you back from work? I am, yes. I've been back for about half an hour. Are you at home now? Sorry, say that again. I say, are you at home now? Yeah, I've been home for about half an hour. Oh, okay, okay. I just want to hear yeah, your lovely voice. So tell me what it is that you do. You say what? Tell me what you actually do. I can hear you. Tell me what you actually do. Faced with a difficult question, that man left the call. And before we go any further, I'll play you that short extract from YouTube of the genuine person whose photo was being used here. Well, uh, it's fairly simple, to be honest with you. I think uh, first I'll just tell you I am an, uh, I'm an Army brat. And, uh, and so I got introduced to the Army a long time ago. I was hoping you'd explain to me what you do, said Celia after the call. And you'll probably realise that our man was starting to struggle. Well, fairly soon, he's going to be struggling even more. 
The signal is very bad, he said. I can't hear you clearly. I could hear you, said Celia. So, what are you saying, he asked. What do you mean, asked Celia. I said, what were you saying before I hung up the call? I already told you, said Celia. I was hoping you'd explain to me what you do. OK, he said. You mean my occupation? Yes, said Celia. I was hoping you'd explain to me what you do as a peacekeeper. OK, he said. I'm an army. We protect the life of the people and we protect property here. How do you do that? asked Celia. As from 10am in the morning, I'm on duty, he said. Hope you understand. No, said Celia. That doesn't really tell me what you actually do. So, how do you still want me to explain it to you? He asked. What did you actually do yesterday? asked Celia. Walk the streets to see everything was quiet? Have talks with a local group? You know, what do you actually do each day? And now, our man is going to introduce you to some official US Army jargon. OK, he said. The bad men here are forcefully collecting people, property and killing people here. So we are deployed here to save lives and property. But the bad men here always try to fight back. So we attack them whenever they want to do evil. So we go around the town and check if everything is all right. That's what I do every day. Bad men, said Celia. Is that an official US Army term? So he sent her another photo. And underneath... He added, check my uniform, US Army. OK, said Celia, I'll assume that bad men is an official US Army term. You attack them? How is that peacekeeping? Because they're bad men, he said. Tell me about all the decorations on your photo on Facebook, she asked. Sorry, I know I'm laughing, but I know what comes next. They kill people. They don't want to make peace, but we're trying to make peace here. We're trying our best. What decorations are you talking about? And which photo? How many photos do you have on Facebook, asked Celia? Are you seriously telling me you don't remember what you've been decorated for? I have more than one photo on Facebook, he said, so I don't know the exactly one you're talking about. You mean you have so many decorations and medals, you change them from photo to photo, asked Celia. Can you send me one of your beautiful pictures, he said trying to change the subject and obviously failing miserably. Stop changing the subject, said Celia. Tell me about your decorations. You can refresh your memory by going to Facebook and looking at the photo on your profile page. How do you want me to explain it to you? That is my uniform, he said. All the medals and decorations, said Celia. What were you awarded them for? Or are you getting Alzheimer's? Because I don't understand your previous, he said. Why are you asking me about decorations? Because I'm interested to know what you awarded them for, said Celia, who absolutely refused to tell him what she was talking about and refused to send him the relevant bit from the photo. And so he thought he'd call her again. Hello? Hello? Yeah, hello. Hello? Why won't you tell me about all the decorations you've got? Yeah, how are you? I'm fine. Why won't you tell me about all the decorations you've been awarded? You said what? Why won't you tell me about all the decorations that you've been awarded? No, I don't understand what you're saying. Do you understand what you're saying? I don't understand what you're saying about the, the decoration. What decoration are you talking about? All the ones on your uniform. All the ones you've been awarded. Don't you know what you awarded them for? It seems our man didn't know why he was awarded them and, as before, asked a question that he couldn't answer. Our man disappeared. I don't understand why you won't tell me about all your decorations, said Celia. What decorations are you about here, he said. I still don't understand what you're talking about. Oh, FGS, said Celia. All the ones on your uniform. You know, the uniform you are wearing in your photo on your Facebook page. You can refresh your struggling brain cell by going to your Facebook page and looking at the photo that you put there of you in your uniform jacket. So he managed to go to Facebook and find that photo that I showed you at the beginning and he posted it to Celia. Well done, said Celia, 
who thought of adding 10 out of 10, but didn't. That's the picture that I was awarded as a lieutenant colonel, my dear friend, he said. No, dimwit, said Celia. All those decorations. I can see at least 40. What are they all for? I realise your single brain cell is struggling. That decorations is America flag, he said. Don't be an idiot, said Celia. Of course they aren't. The flag is behind you, you know, on the wall, behind you. What are the decorations on your army jacket? The ones that you were awarded. Are you talking about the silver star and bronze star medal award on my jacket, he asked. I understand what you're talking about. I was thinking that you're asking me about my wall on my picture. I have no idea what they are, said Celia, brain dead moron. That's why I'm asking you. Why are you insulting me by calling me names? He asked. They aren't insults, said Celia. They're true. How many times have I asked you to tell me about your decorations? I was lost with your question, said our struggling brain cell. I take my time to read your text and understand what you're talking about. You were lost with understanding a straightforward, very simple question about the decorations on your jacket. That just makes you even more stupid, said Celia. A lieutenant colonel that has to take my time to read the same question over half a dozen times, asking what his decorations are. I was thinking that you're talking about the first pictures that I sent you here on Hangouts, he said, until you told me to go to my Facebook profile. No, you weren't, said Celia. You were being thick, forgetting your own decorations and awards. What's really happened? Have you been invalided out of the army because your memory has gone? And you first said that decorations on my picture. That's the reason why I said that is America flag until you said decorations on my jacket. I apologise for reading his part of the conversation as if he's a disgruntled 12 year old whose mother's just told him that he's gated for misbehaviour. Stop being an idiot, said Celia. You know perfectly well which decorations I was referring to. A highly decorated man like yourself pretending he thinks I'm talking about a flag. How stupid do you think I am? Well, I have a lot of things that I'm thinking about here, he said, because I'm in bad situation right now. I guess if you only have one brain cell, said Celia, then it would struggle to think about more than one thing at a time. Very understandable. What's the decorations on your jacket, he said. Not what's your decorations on your pictures. But it's OK. Let's forget about it. We don't need to argue over it, OK? To refresh that struggling brain cell, said Celia, copying and pasting the bit where she'd said. The ones on your uniform, you know, the uniform you are wearing in your photo on your Facebook page. I think that was clear enough, don't you? I said, let's forget about it, OK? We don't need to argue over it, OK? We aren't arguing about it, said Celia. You are being thick and stupid and refusing to apologise. If you apologise for refusing to answer, then we can forget about it. But if you persist in trying to pretend you weren't being thick and stupid, then you can go away. I'm sorry for not answering your question on time. OK, he said. OK, said Celia. And please don't make me ask any more very simple questions multiple times. It's so boring. I'm going for a shower. OK, he said. I will. I'm waiting to hear from you. Text me when you're done taking your shower. What's the bad situation that you're in? asked Celia when she'd come back from showering. To which our man replied, Have you eaten your dinner? Why, said Celia, it's nearly bedtime here. Have you eaten your dinner? OK, I just want to know, he said. Have you eaten yours? asked Celia. Following that with, did you eat it all up so you could have your pudding? It's all about my son, he said. But don't worry, because I don't want to bother people about my son's situation. Yeah, I did already. I ate and rice, chicken and salad. What kind of food did you eat and for your dinner? Fried worm casserole with boiled ant stew, said Celia. The rest was raw. You have to admire Celia's increasingly varied diet. OK, he said. Are you married and have children? I'm a widow, said Celia. I have an adult son who lives in Sydney in Australia with his girlfriend. I'm sorry for your great loss, my dear, he said. How long you lost your husband now? Thank you, said Celia. We lost him just over three years ago. He was a lot older than me. I'm a widower, he said. With only one son. I lost my lovely wife and my daughter some couple of years ago in a car accident on their way coming back home from shopping now. I lost my lovely wife and my daughter five years ago. How 
old is your son? Two years ago or five years ago, asked Celia. Make up your mind. Dan is thirty. Five, he said. Kelvin is fourteen years old. Have you been in any relationship since you lost your husband? He asked. That's none of your business, said Celia. I just want to know. But he's okay, he said. What's your hobbies and religion? I do yogic chair levitation and existential polymorphic randomism, she said. I'm a ninth day de Adventist. What are your hobbies and religion? My hobbies, he said. Reading newspapers, watching TV, listening to music, sport, particularly swimming, travelling, religious, Roman Catholic. My plan for my future is to go into investment after my retirement or before retirement and search for a loving woman like a caring mother and settle down with. I'm looking for a serious term relationship, a nice friend who is honest, truthful, faithful and caring. What kind of investment are you thinking about, asked Celia? I'm planning to go into real estate business, he said, own hotel and construction company. My goodness, said Celia, how do you have time to do all those things? Our man's well thought out retirement programme had a sudden change of plan. I think I'll forget about the company, he said, because it's going to take a lot of process to set up a company. But I can buy a hotel. What's your plans for your future? I don't really have one, said Celia. I have to work for at least another ten years and I like the job I have. Will you buy a hotel in San Francisco? I would like to have one in SF and one outside, he said. OK, said Celia, your own chain of hotels. Yeah, he said, I was planning to set up the business before I lost my lovely wife and my daughter. My late is RN. Are you a citizen of England? What do you mean your late is RN? asked Celia. Registered nurse, he said. Ah, oh, OK, said Celia. Of course I'm a citizen of England. Why do you want to know? Has President Biden issued a proclamation of some kind? I just want to know if you're a foreigner that's staying in England, he said. And I know I missed a chance there. I should have told him I was Nigerian. Have you been to America once before? He asked. Why do you want to know that? Asked Celia. Do you know something about foreigners staying in England that I don't? You've got me worried. Nope, he said. So why do you want to know? Are you a foreigner staying in the USA? Nope, he said. I'm a native of America. You're a native American? Asked Celia. We did have one video somewhere, didn't we? Where someone claimed that they were. He didn't fall for it. I visited England 2012, he said. That was the last time I visited England. Yeah, I'm a native of America. Have you been to America once before? Once before what? Asked Celia. Where did you visit when you came to England? And he's now going to turn into one of those geographically challenged scammers that we all know and love. If there's one absolute giveaway that you're talking to a Nigerian scammer, it's football. Nigerians seem to really love their football. I went there to watch Football Championship League, and I think he meant final. Chelsea versus Manchester United. Chelsea is my favourite team. You haven't answered my previous question. Which question, asked Celia? Have you been to America once before? And I asked you, once before what? said Celia. To which our man replied, do you like football? No, I don't, said Celia. That means you don't watch football, he asked. No, I don't, she said. I asked you where you visited in England, not which game you watched. North England, he said. But where in North England, asked Celia. Oh, you shouldn't have asked him that, Celia. You really shouldn't have asked. Do you know where Chelsea home is located in England? He asked. Yes, said Celia. I asked you where you visited in the north of England. And before we go any further, for those of you that don't live in the UK, I'll just show you a little map. Give or take a little bit, this is a map of England. The pin shows you the location of Stamford Bridge in London, in the south of England. And I've circled Durham, where Celia lives, in the north of England. Birmingham, which is in the middle of that map, is usually considered to be the Midlands. Whereas Liverpool, Manchester, Sheffield, Leeds and North are usually considered to be the north of England. There might be some dispute about that. I'm sure few people will leave comments. Why did you want to know everything? Stop questioning if I don't know what I'm saying, said the man who obviously didn't know what he's saying and had never been anywhere near England. What do you want to know? I mean, what are you trying to figure out? I'm not trying to figure out anything, said Celia. 
You told me you'd come to the north of England. I'm interested to know where. If I told you I'd been to the US, wouldn't you ask me where? Because I have been to the US. I'm surprised you can't just tell me where you came to, said Celia. It shouldn't be difficult. Watch out for this if you're talking to someone online. Ask them questions. If they can't answer them, then just consider very carefully whether the person that you're talking to might not be genuine. I've told you the reason why I went there, he said, and the purpose of going there. Maybe you start asking me what street. I didn't ask you why you came, said Celia, and I haven't asked you which street. Stop acting like a baby. And the hotel I spend my night. I asked you where you came in the north of England, she said. You know, which city? Oh, grow up. I didn't ask you which hotel or which street. Just where you came. Try. I came to Leeds. I came to Bradford. I came to Carlisle. I came to Newcastle. I came to Durham. I told you that I went there to watch in Stamford Bridge, he said. No, you didn't tell me that, said Celia. You told me you went to the north of England. To refresh your sadly lacking brain, this is what you said. North of England. Now you tell me you went to Stamford Bridge. FGS, make up your frickin' mind. How can a lieutenant colonel in the US Army be so, so dim and stupid? I told you the reason why I went there and my club. You supposed to know more than about where Chelsea Stadium is located? I know where Chelsea Stadium is located, said Celia. You clearly don't. So it's obvious you've never been there. So tell me where you really came to in the north of England. Why could you use that word idiot in our conversation? Said our offended 14 year old. And I didn't ask you the reason why you came. I asked you where you came. I assume you do know the difference between why and where. And I used the word idiot because that's what you're being. She gave him a few more suggestions of places in the north of England that he might have been to. That word idiot hurt me a lot, he said. Grow up, said Celia, and stop acting like a baby. You're a lieutenant colonel, not a cleaning boy. Some more places for you to choose from in the north of England. And she gave him some more. And if you look at the timestamps on this conversation, you probably realised I've missed out quite a lot of it. The next morning, Celia said, so you still haven't remembered where you came in the north of England, despite me giving you an extensive list of places. So now I know you were lying. Did you think it would impress me? I don't think men who lie are impressive. Even those that I've forgotten the place. That doesn't make me a lied, he said. I can't forget about it because that's a long time ago. Don't be ridiculous, said Celia. It was 10 years ago. It's obvious you're lying. Otherwise, you'd just tell me. I've given you an extensive list. All you have to do is pick one place from it and pretend that's where you visited. I assume you thought you'd sound impressive. And now you're too much of a coward to admit you lied and apologise. So, goodbye. Goodbye, said our man. And so they parted company. Just recently, Celia has been getting all the friend requests. And I've decided that it's time that she started trying to be nice to them. She might even play the part of Serafina. In fact, she might play lots of different parts because apparently she's got herself on a list of potential victims. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. Please hit that like button. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Please comment down below. Please share it with your friends and I'll see you again in another video.